Now tonight I want you to turn with me to the 19th chapter of Luke's Gospel. The 19th chapter of Luke's Gospel. And I'm going to read a portion of it to you because I want to talk about a, a very short man that ran and climbed a tree to see Jesus. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now Jericho at that time was like Florida. Palm trees, warm in the wintertime. Herod had his palace there. It was a place where the rich people from all over the Middle East came for their winter vacations. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. But I'm going to skip the rest of that reading and just tell it to you. The Bible says that Jesus was passing through Jericho. He was on his way to Jerusalem to die. And he meets a fellow by the name of Bartimaeus, who was a blind man. And Bartimaeus cried out and said, help me, help me, help me, I'm blind. And he didn't quite know who he was. And somebody yelled to him and said, Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. Just as Jesus is doing tonight, he's passing by tonight. We may never see another sight like this in St. Louis in your lifetime. It's been many years since we've seen so many people come night after night to hear the gospel. But on his way through Jericho, something else was happening. And I think this is the reason he went to Jericho, because he went way out of his way to go to Jericho. There was one man there that he went to see. And that one man's name was Zacchaeus. And he was the tax collector. And tax collectors in those days were looked upon as crooks. What happened was, this was, these were Jewish people, and this man, Zacchaeus, was a publican who collected taxes for Rome, who occupied Israel and Judah. But when he would collect the taxes, he would skim off quite a bit for himself and everybody knew that he was a crook and he wanted to see Jesus out of curiosity perhaps or maybe his conscience was bothering him whatever the reason he was a lonely man but he was curious he had heard about Jesus he probably had heard Jesus called a devil a fanatic a blasphemer, a heretic, a prophet, an imposter, and even some said he was the Son of God. Now Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus for himself. He didn't plan to become a follower, and he didn't plan to receive salvation. He thought that was all taken care of. But when Zacchaeus got there and couldn't get to Jesus, he climbed the sycamore tree. And a sycamore tree then was very slick. And the limbs were quite high. And Zacchaeus had to work hard getting up that sycamore tree. And then he tried to hide behind the leaves. He never imagined what God intended to do for him that day. You see, the crowd was so many that he couldn't get to Jesus and he couldn't see Jesus. So he did the best he could to see Jesus. And we have obstacles today in order to get to Jesus. One is pride. You say, what will people think? To see me, here I am a deacon in the church. I'm a Sunday school teacher. And yet I, I'm not sure that I'm right with God. I'd like to make sure, and tonight I could do it here. But if I walked down there, people would see me. The Bible says, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And then the second thing is the love of the world. 
We love the world so much, for what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Suppose you had the whole world. Suppose all the wealth of the whole world was yours and you lost your soul. You see, your body dies, but your spirit, your soul, lives on. And that's the most important thing. And yet tonight you would have to tell me that you're not sure that your soul really knows Christ. You can make sure. There are many people here tonight that are empty inside. You promote your own eternal death by being absorbed with the world around you. More absorbed with your job or your money or your pleasures than you are with God. And then another thing that keeps you from coming to Jesus is self-righteousness. There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes, the scripture says, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. The Bible says, Jesus said, your lips praise me, but your heart is far from me. On the outside, you can talk religion. You can quote some scripture. You can go to the church. You can be an officer in the church. But deep down inside, you're not sure that Jesus lives there. And then as Jesus was passing through, and Zacchaeus was up in that tree hiding behind those leaves, he looked down at Jesus, and suddenly Jesus looked up at him, taking Zacchaeus by surprise. And then Jesus called him by name, Zacchaeus. Come down out of that tree. I'm going to your house to stay with you today. Well, Zacchaeus nearly dropped his teeth out. How could Jesus even know his name and come and stay with him in front of all these people that hated him? And all through history, God has been calling people by their names. Jesus said that he is the good shepherd, calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. In Genesis 3, 9, we read that God came to the Garden of Eden personally when Adam and Eve had sinned against God. And he said, Adam, where are you? He knew where Adam was. But he wanted to know if Adam knew. And God is saying to you, John, Bill, Susie, Mary, where are you? Where are you spiritually? Where do you stand before me? Do you know? Now God knows. But you must be sure yourself. And then it's an urgent call. He said, Zacchaeus, make haste, hurry, jump. Today we're needing urgent calls to God for salvation. Now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. You may never have another moment like this tonight. You can only come when God calls you. When you hear the message and you act on it, and he's calling on you to act on it tonight, to say, I want to know when I leave here that if I died, I'm going to heaven. And it was a successful call. This was Zacchaeus' golden moment. He had waited a long time to see this Jesus whom he'd heard much about. And it was now or never. This crusade, will be finished in a couple days, this part of it. And we've prayed, thousands of people have prayed and believed and worked to make this possible. And for you tonight is now or never perhaps. So in spite of all the scores of people looking up at him in the tree, he made haste and came down publicly in front of all those people. Now Jesus went to Zacchaeus' home. He probably took Matthew with him because Matthew too 
had been a tax collector, a publican, and he had turned from that and followed Jesus. And you know, the Pharisees were there and all the religious leaders and they were making fun of Jesus. They were shouting at him. They said he eats with sinners. I spend time with sinners too. And people wonder why. To try to have a witness to them. We have testimony we have testimonies in the Crusades about people who were sinners that we spent a little time with. And they've come to Christ. Christ said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. If any man. That means whatever the color of your skin. And that's one of the great things I've been burdened about since I've been here. Is the racial tension that still exists underneath. Not only in St. Louis, but in many cities. And every night before I come in here, some wonderful clergy come in and pray for me. They put their hands on mine and pray with me and pray for the meeting tonight. And several of them are African American. And I've met some of the finest African American ministers here I've ever met anywhere in the world. And some of the some of the finest people, but we just don't know each other. You see, part of us have moved way out to the suburbs. We don't want to be near people that we don't understand and people that look different than we are. And that's the way it was in Zacchaeus' day too. The Jews and the Samaritans didn't have anything to do with each other. There was no difference in them except a few differences in theology. They looked alike. They talked alike. But they didn't have anything to do with each other. And all over the world I have found that whether you go to India, whether you go to Latin America, you go to the Far East, people who are different have a difficult time living next door to people who are not like them. And we have that same thing in this country. We sometimes go by the color of a person's skin. Well, that's nothing to go by. We're, we're made in the image of God. We're people. We're the same. Oh, I know. And we're all guilty of racism, whether we have a dark skin or a light skin. Something is just not quite right. And Christ can make it right. He can bring us together. But more important, he can save your soul. And you can know that you're saved, and you can know if you died, you'd go to heaven tonight. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now Zacchaeus was in there talking to Jesus, and Jesus was talking to him, and they had a wonderful conversation. We don't know what they said to each other because it's not recorded. But when Zacchaeus came out, he stood in front of all the people and he said to the Lord, whoever I have stolen from, I'll restore to him four times. And the Bible says, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, 
him will I confess before my father which is in heaven. In other words, Zacchaeus said, I'm ready to make the whole thing right. It's not only the decision we make, but it's the life we lead. People look at how we live, as well as what we say and what we profess. Are you lost? Are you confused? Are you stumbling through life not quite knowing what the purpose of it all is? Jesus can come into your life tonight and change all that and you can know who you are. And the choice is yours. He didn't make you a robot that he would push a button and you would obey him. He made you a free moral agent you can choose. And he's knocking at your heart's door tonight and he says, I want to come in. I want to eat with you, be with you. I want to be in your heart. I want to give you assurance. I want to give you a new joy and a new peace and a new relationship with your family. I want to change you. Let me come in. What are you going to do tonight? Will you do that?